Top Billing, billing. Uptown Murph. Top Billing, Billing. Yo, it's time to get back at it with those J E T S Jets, 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 who are going to absolutely destroy it. Y'all know I'm bigging up that Murph Bowl, right? That Jersey Murph Bowl. Uh, with North and South Jersey be well represented with the Jets and the Eagles in the Super Bowl. So I'm looking for that to happen. And both teams have a very great chance of that happening. As far as the Jets go, we know last year with that type of defense that they have in that run game, come on, man. A healthy Aaron Rodgers would have been <laughs> it would have been too much for people to handle, right? So this year it's going to be too much for people to handle and they can add to it. I'm all about building up front. No doubt about that, man. My boy Olu Fashinu in this draft, along with a cat like Joe Alt, you got to build out that line of scrimmage. No doubt about that, right? Uh, you wouldn't have got two, I believe them, they might actually both be 33 years old, right? Two exterior tackles. You have the great Tyron Smith, at least at one particular point in time, he was the great Tyron Smith on one side. And then you bring back Morgan Moses, right? No matter how you cut that, that is an upgrade for what you had in the past. Is that enough? When you get that age, baby, you could sneeze wrong and get injured. So, right? Is there a right way to sneeze, right? You can sneeze wrong and get injured. But having a guy like Fashino or Alt, maybe some guys who can, you can kick inside for a little bit uh, and then have them swing, right, just in case of emergency, break glass in case of emergency. And, of course, they will take over for the future. You have to always be looking at the future as well. I think that will be perfect. But it's hard for me to think that my boy Brock Bowers is in this draft, and they may have a chance to get a cat like Brock Bowers who adds, I'm telling you, to a myriad of positions, right? Brock Bowers with the number 10 pick. How sway? How sway? How is the Jets going to be this good and have a number 10 pick the way they could get a guy like that? All right, you know I'm saying it's, it's some kind of subterfuge or something like that, right? General Joe Douglas doing the damn thing, no doubt about it. Bringing in Haas Reddick has the number 10 pick, Brock Bowers. A guy who you can play in the slot, right? He played a ton of slot at Georgia, so he would add to that. Of course, you play him as an attached tight end, uh, closing off the line of scrimmage on his side, right? Two tight sets could be in vogue as well. Right, your boy, your boy out there with two tight sets with Big Mike Williams, Garrett Wilson, right, going to be a top five wide receiver in this league if he's not already. Big Mike Williams already been doing his thing, big freak athlete like that. Having a two tight set where it be with Conklin and Bowers, or maybe even a guy like my boy Jeremy Ruckett can step up. Uh, come on, that's scary because you add in that perimeter blocking. That's what I like about Brock Bowers. Covered him since. Uh, he was in high school, so being as though the University of Georgia is my primary coverage, I've seen every snap of Brock Bowers. I remarked when he was a freshman, right? I will roll a film study that I did prior here, right? I, it was intended for the Jets, but I did it for another team. But I think the Jets, with him, if we're talking about adding to the line of scrimmage, you cannot forget that because he can block that well, right? My nickname for him for the past three years has been Block Bowers, so, matter of fact, let's go ahead and get into that. All right, check out my man Block Bowers right here, right across from Jamari and Latham. They're running this quick zone. So, you're going to have zone flow across the board. They want to get that aiming point right off the outside hip of Xavier Trust right here, the right tackle. And you can see him work straight up going against Jamari and Latham. Here. Now, uh, look at that right there. You see that? All right, you see the power in the core? All right, you know you see that. The power in the core right here. Don't worry about, go back right here. Don't worry about your man Ernest Green right here uh, helping out because he's not really doing anything, right? This is all block. Your man block right in the upper, right up in the upper crest on the shoulder pads on the inside. Driving and driving and driving Miss Daisy right there. Strong through the core. Bam, ushers him up out of there, right? This really, the front side makes that back side cut really work there. You got to get everybody flowing out of there and you got to have the space to do that. And he clears out. I laid them pretty good right there. But they had great backside pursuit, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Come on, man. Look at your boy right here. Don't forget about my man, Brees Hall. Brees Hall could be the very best running back in all of the NFL. You get him some perimeter blocking like this, look at that. Your boy Brock Bowers is relentless with it. Look at that. Hand on the inside. He takes pride in blocking. 
Look at that. Strong through the core, and you have to make sure that you have great knee bend, even as a blocker, beyond being an offensive lineman there. And that stick to itiveness. This is him blocking linemen. So imagine that right there. All right, I know it's only so long you guys going to let me talk about blocking. So let's get to some of the stuff that I know you guys really like. Check him out right here on this out route. Now, he'll get the linebacker here on his heels. And being able to get this guy matched up on linebackers and safeties, oh, my God, it's going to be nasty, nasty. Even little-ass DBs putting him in a slot. How do you counter that? That's you dictating. That's you leading the dance right here. But he's such a good route runner, and it's – a lot of sell, no tell type stuff. Look at this. Not super imaginative, right? Not like Garrett Wilson with the uh, with all the histrionics and all that, right? Getting jiggy with it. But a uh, very efficient, a very efficient route runner. You can see impressive vertically. So let's not right there. Look at that little subtle move right there. Uh, that breaks him down in space to be able to cut that sharp angle. And look at that. Right, that's some that's some really good pandemic. That's some pandemic separation for that ass right there. Right, that's that's that that might be early pandemic separation if I've seen it. Right, not a good pass from my man Carson Beck there though, but uh, it does not matter. You put it anywhere in his vicinity, he's going to go and get that bad boy. And his yards after the catch, some mm, God, some of the best you'll see. Period. Say it with me, y'all. Offensive weapon. That's exactly what I think of Brock Bowers as. You see him right here. Lined up at fullback, right? He's taking a, a damn belly play right up the gut there, and they're letting him drop his pad level, change elevation, and get some yardage. That's what you can do with a guy like Brock Bowers. I know people want to talk about his height and stuff, but he's around the same height as these guys out here, man. I'll do something on that another time, but he's around the same height. Check this block out. Counter OT, going to have that opposite pulling guard, get that counter action from the running back, Kendall Milton, and you have Block Bowers coming here doing his one-two thing pretty much on a lead. And you can see the physicality on this one right here. Quick hit and play. Bang! Cherries, lemons, and bananas. Full tilt. He better them like he better the linebacker. Man. Coming around and Bang, shorten his neck. He was already short to begin with. Now he's about 5'2". He's sleep, right? Somnambulism right there. He's out on his feet. <laughs> he's driving the car, but he's not in control of the wheel. You know what I mean? <laughs> he zombied himself back up. Brock might have knocked himself out too. <laughs> right? He had to go as well. <laughs> Ain't nobody having to lay it down for a nap, man. Somebody content ID claiming it. So if it gets erased, uh, you know why. But... My man Brock Bowers, I think one of the best things that he does is his yards after catch. He is going to be phenomenal at that. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, being able to run these type of screens right here on a block and release. As you can see, you get him out in space. He's going to make people miss. His acceleration, his 0-60 to 60 is absolutely phenomenal right there. And, uh, man, it's just one of those guys that, like a Travis Kelsey, um, like... George Kittle, right, who, he, who he's been compared to, and guys like that, are they able to work the ground section um, of receiving uh, just because they have good spatial awareness and they're able to be very elusive after the catch right there. Bang, making a man fertilize himself in the open field there, and uh, you guys know the rest. I wanted to know about his height, obviously, because in the NFL, you're going to be facing much stiffer competition. Pause. But even though this man faced – a ton of great competition. To me, he still was money making 50-50 balls seem more like 80-20 balls. We see him right here getting wheeled up the field. You want to match him up on a safety. Uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. The way this man runs his routes, able to vary his route speed, and then the way he just accelerates on people. Look at that. Oh, my man did not run that 40 at the combine. I actually didn't expect him to. I think that's the new dope right there. Like, if you have people that you feel you want to know about their 40 time or whatever like that. I feel like that's just going to be the deal right there. People are not going to run it, but you can see right here, uh, he's able to kind of bog it down and then accelerate on him right here. And he catches some pretty good separation. Look at him. He's virtually stacked the receiver damn near or stacked the cornerback separates at the end tracking, tracking. Look at that. Oh, goes up and gets it. Instead of letting it come down to him, 
He goes and meets it at his apex, snatching the ball out of the air. A natural hands catcher, which can't be said about a lot of people. Right there, are some people in the NFL we know aren't natural hands catcher, and they'll let it get into their body. Brock Bowers doesn't have them problems, baby. Now you can give it to your corner too. Uh, you talking about running this dig right here? Now Bowers has the ability to get. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, jingle-footed if necessary, get saucy with it in and out of his transitions. But a lot of his stuff is very, um, man, I don't know, formulaic, right? It's very textbook, very sound. Uh, you can see how there's no wasted motion coming out of this transition right here. Look at him. Push it vertically. Bang, look at that. You saw that? Oh, now I know the cornerback had outside leverage. Right, you see, turn and run with that outside leverage, uh, but he does and has the ability to work in, and, and is that's definitely uh, his assignment there. But look at this: when you're able to bog it like that, come out of that transition, cut a sharp angle. You see him cutting that sharp angle. The cornerback had to kind of round his right there. He's going to give you that separation to where he's able to show you the numbers, and once he can show you the numbers there, hands catcher, get it in right there. Actually, the ball was behind him a little bit, so look at him adjust on that. Right, he went for the hands right here, but the ball's behind him, so he has to go. What a catch! Little stuff like that. Some of these people wouldn't be able to catch like that, and then turn up field with the ball going behind him. And of course, he's always going to finish forward, he'll give you an extra two or three yards like that. Come on, man. People who would fight for their right, right to get extra yardage, always a one in my book. Here we go again, block and release this time, getting faded. Tracking at the last second. Ken Griffey style right there. Look at that. Right on him. Getting up out of that right there. Now look at this. He's working down Phil. That looks like he was looking at the coverage or whatever like that. He's probably thinking the ball might not be coming to me. I don't know. I'm trying to see what the safety is. Tracks it at the last moment right there. And still able to, of course, finish for bang. You're going to get punished every single time. A time. All right, here we go. Motion tight, motion trade, just to come back, bang, sell that to get him and let him break tackles in the open space. Look how I'm finishing with Skalski right there. Remember, this is Brock Bowers right here as a true freshman. He was that good right away. Look at that, bang, knocked Miles Murphy out, right? Slept him, right? He air napping, All right? Get him the ball out in space, let him survey, break one tackle, See your boy James Skalski coming, right? Who was at that time period right there, one of the hardest hitters out there. Meet him head on as a true freshman. Bang, look at that collision, man. Damn, I miss playing ball just because of shit like that. And look at him finishing moving forward. He's still on his feet. Skalski having to wait for the cavalry to come up show up. Come on, Brock Bowers is an animal. I'm telling you, this man is like a cat. Look at this. They had this place sniffed out. Look at that. He still stayed on his feet. You talk about staying on schedule. Uh, this could have been a, a loss. At the very least, he makes it a no gainer. I actually think he might have gained a yard or two right here. The corner coming, he doesn't really have time to gather himself for anything. And then the corner goes low, right? That's actually not that bad of a tackling for him there. But he's just so, he just has so much dexterity and balance. Look at that. Slip the tackle, stays on that same lead leg there to be able to spin around and fall forward. Come on, man. I'll come back and do more on Brock Bowers and his pass catching ability. It's well known that he's one of the best pass catchers, period, point blank, at the position. I'll stack him up against anybody, even my man Kyle Pitts. He's as good as a pass catcher as Kyle Pitts. I probably does not have that type of... Uh, catch radius, but his catch radius is good enough, and he can operate in all kinds of manners, man. You can put him in line, out out wide. You can do all that stuff Kyle Pitts can do, but this is what separates him right here. <laughs> you you can at attach him. You can detach him. He's going to block the same. Look at this. Oh, loot and lascivious. Got to block that out for all the kids watching right there. Prison loving. Look at that. Uh, work him off that tight zone. So, right, working off his backside there, giving Zamir White a chance to run through some contact there. Uh, but you see how that play is made. You attach him, 
to the overhang defender or end man on the line of scrimmage. He'll continue to work and look at the leg drive. Same deal right here. And this was him as a true freshman, guys. I'm doing this on purpose to show you how polished he was as a true freshman. Nasty. Fertilizing people with lewd and serious behavior way back then a couple of years ago. Remember, he's at the best program in the country, and they ran a lot of their runs off the strength of him. Now, you see him go in motion right here. Uh, get the overhang defender, and you'll see how the zone run uh, permeates his way. Here we go. Put him in motion, stretch it, and then look at that right there, right? With him able to get on the outside right there, are you able to make that really good, seal that off? Everybody's doing their job right here, and James Cook is able to find an organic cutback crease there. Georgia on that tight zone, so they want to influence the flow that way so he can get on the outside shoulder and pin that where James Cook here were to work that tight, that aiming point real tight, catch it out the backside there. Look at this. Doing the thing, continuing that leg drive, and he'll stay on the block as well. Leg drive, bang, get into that outside shoulder there, continuing the drive, wash that man away. Like, like rain right there, that's hard, let's get it. Wash him away like rain, usher that man about the club kindly. Your services are no longer needed in this club, sir. Do not come back. Look, I'm going to use this edge defender right here as a crash test dummy. Look at this, splat tire. <laughs> he took a little bit of punishment as well there, but, but listen. You can learn a lot from a dummy. Crash dummy this man right here trying to get on the inside of him. Of course, they're running that tight zone again. Aiming point. Extremely tight right off of his hips. Look at that. Able to make that happen right there. James Cook get up Phil. <laughs> it's one thing to be naturally good at something. It's a whole nother ball of wax to take pride in it. You see him right here? Straight up, watch them stick to this block. They're congratulating them as well. Look at this. Straight up, one-on-one. -on -one. You want to put a safety or a linebacker on him? It's all good. Look at him. Jack him up, start to drive Miss Daisy. Hands on the outside. You can see him still with his peripheral vision there looking at Zemir White. What are they running right here? It's like the same deal right there, tight zone. And, of course, they're still using him. Look at him. Get between himself and the defender there. Understand uh, exactly what the assignment is right there. And Zamir White keeps it tight off his hips again. Slips through a couple of tackles. Touchdown. Top billing. billing. Uptown Murph. Top billing, billing. 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 Billing.